Good morning or good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is John here, and this is Get Visible, where we actually interview local businesses, successful businesses, entrepreneurs from uh, all over America, actually all over the world. It actually depends where they are. Today, um, it's, it's interesting. Today, I've got a guest who uh, refurbishes things and is involved in the restaurant industry. And we're going to talk about him, how you want to talk about how his business started, um, how it all came together. And, you know, hopefully he can give you some insights into running an organization like this. Today, my guest is Brad from Advantage Restaurant Equipment in Orlando, Florida. Actually, his full name is Bradrick. Brad, how you doing, dude? Doing, doing good, John. How you doing? Very well, my friend. Very well. So, tell tell everybody a little bit about what it is you guys actually do in in Orlando. What do you actually do with your business? We do. I mean, we do a handful of things when it comes to the restaurant industry. We actually the key part component of our our company is to take equipment that we purchase from either out of capitalization or from mom and pops or who are closing or they're upgrading. And we take that stuff and we completely refurbish it and then resell it. So we'll take a used, for instance, range, commercial range, and we'll get it back to our shop. We'll service it. We'll clean it all up. We'll sandblast it, do everything that needs to do, bring it as much back to close to new as possible, uh, and then put it up for, for sale. How did you get started in it, Brad? I mean, is this a family business? Have you always been in the restaurant industry? Or is this something that you, you saw as a, a, a potential bridge to something different? Um, so this is a family business. Um, we started in 2010. Um, my, my, my father had, had worked for another corporation for 17 years and doing similar things. And at that point in time, I was graduating from college and we determined that it was time to um, maybe try and do this ourselves. So we structured our business a little bit differently, um, but went into the same key kind of business and since then we've been um pr pretty pretty successful doing it um it's something that we we personally i didn't uh start out having a passion for but it's something that i love to do today you know it's it's before we jump into the kind of the, the old versus new <clears throat> and you're refurbishing things um you know it, it, it's it's not easy to jump i mean you say that you've been successful Right, but obviously every business has its ups and downs. You know, what what have been your greatest your your, your greatest fail? You know, not failures, but your greatest hurdles that you've managed to overcome. Um, you know, some of the things that, uh, particularly recently, is it has to do with employment. You know, um, as everyone knows, the the employment market has been really tough. Um, so that's been a, a, an interesting uh, segment for us to to navigate over the last few years. Um, and for sure, uh, things through COVID were something that, uh, with all the, um, excuse me, with all the businesses, uh, that we, the industry that we face shutting down, you know, many hotels weren't open who are regular clients of ours, um, uh, even vendors of ours, um, you know, restaurants and bars having to struggle through that time. Um, that was probably some of the, the, the hardest time for our businesses to, ensure that our team and our members um, of the company uh, stayed employed um, as much as we could through that, that time and ensuring that we could, uh, you know, help our clients along the way, uh, whatever they needed to do to pivot. And uh, to, so when reopening happened, um, they were, they were able to uh, be ready for it. You know, there's, there's a great, there's a great, you kind of talk out there in the in the, the big wide world about the great resignation. You know, COVID had become the great resignation. People wanted to leave their jobs. They realised that life was short. And do you do you feel that that had any impact or has any impact in your business now as you move forward? Um, directly, we we've been really fortunate to to assemble a team of people who. Uh, enjoy doing this and, and enjoy you know what we do and have a passion for our clients but it impacts us a little bit in more indirectly that most of our clients are facing shortages and um, and they're having a tough time not so much financially just you know making sure they maintain a certain customer service level is very difficult mm -hmm. but very important in this industry um, and um you know, we see it and hear about it all the time about how they're struggling to remain open or struggling to, 
ensure they have enough staff to make sure people are happy. Um, mm. And so that has been difficult uh, and it may have cut back on some of their spending because they're not sure where the business is going to go. But mm. um, fortunately, I think um, entrepreneurs in the restaurant industry are resilient um, and mm. it makes, you know, it makes our business a, a little bit more um, easy flowing because they just don't, they're, they don't quit. Do you find, Brad, that they're, they're not buying new products or, or new equipment for their restaurant because of, you know, obviously what's happened through COVID? Because, you know, obviously they can come to you and, you know, in fact, actually just tell us a bit about the benefits that you, you have for these restaurants in terms of that, that whole idea that maybe they can't afford to buy new these days, you know, because of what's going on. Yeah, so a lot of what we do, obviously, is take, refurbish, and resell. So when we sell, resell these used items, they're going to be able to save 30, 40, 50, 60, even 70% sometimes, wow. depending on what they're, what they're purchasing. Mm. So it's, a, it's a, you know, a really important aspect of this business if you're trying to uh, maintain or, or, or even, even open. I mean, the way we refurbish things, you're going to get a lot of the similar life out of a, a unit that you would if you purchased it brand new. Um, so when it comes down to it, you're saving a ton of money up front or saving money on a replacement um, instead of spending new. Um, and, and for our side of things, we've been pretty fortunate lately because of manufacturing of new products is, have such large lead times right now that uh, yes. we've been able to supply you know, our cl clients with um, equipment on relatively short lead times. Um, getting them what they're looking for, getting replacements so that they don't yeah. get in trouble uh, with the health inspection or don't have a Friday night where they're short, you know, a, a piece of equipment goes down and they have it, you know, um, those worries are easier to, to fix for them when we, because we do have used refurbished equipment available for them. Yeah, that must actually make them, it must make you feel really good as well because, you know, you're, you're actually helping restaurateurs or restaurant entrepreneurs get out of a bind yeah i mean absolutely there's there's lots of times i get phone calls at you know friday at, at three o'clock hey i need this you know this went down and i without it i can't function we do everything we can to make sure we get them something you know it doesn't always mean i can i can do it in two hours but if there's something we can do to to get that done uh we'll definitely attempt to do it for for our clients um but you know making sure that other people are successful helps us uh, maintain our business, re repeat customers, satisfy customers. They, they continue to come back, to, you know, for another item or another store. Um, so it's something that's really important to us is to be able to provide, um, provide that, that service to them. Um, do you, do you think that there's a, you know, there's a shortage in new equipment, obviously, but is there a shortage of used equipment? Uh, so there are definitely things that are very limited right now. The, the, some of the basics are pretty pretty difficult to come by right now because you aren't getting because there isn't capitalization. You can't get a replacement new, you know, things like ice machines, basic stainless steel tables. Um, there's definitely uh, you know shortages on those things in new and used because you just yeah. can't get something for a replacement. Um, so even makes it our job a little bit harder to to locate those things that are we have them for our clients but um they're definitely things uh another things like you know prep stations you know 48 and 60 are really really limited because that's the most common sizes so anything that you can think of that's pretty common um you know 36 inch ranges you know every the key items every restaurant needs are pretty limited right now we are still getting them we are still finding them and you know getting them ready but um, it definitely makes for a, uh, a difficult time um, ensuring all of our customers are happy. But they're definitely limited right now. Do you, do you think, you know, I'm actually going to throw you under a bus a little bit now. So say right. someone is a, a restaurant entrepreneur. You know, they've just come through the, panda the pandemic. Their, their, their dream is to own their own restaurant and set up what what would you say is is the probably the setup course for doing everything new and, and i'm not I, I mean i know i'm throwing you under the bus a little bit because obviously there's a lot more there's marketing there's everything else is thrown into it but you know what what would you say in terms of equipment 
what is it that they, it would possibly cost them to set up a restaurant from scratch, brand new, as opposed to what you can provide them with to get up and go and, and people through the door? So there's definitely some tricky aspects to that. Um, there are things new right now that cost four or five times what it cost two years ago. So, you know, two years ago, I could have told you it was probably, you know, you could do a decent sized facility for 50 or $60,000 new. Um, now I'm going to tell you that number has easily doubled, um, yeah. with br maybe even tripled with brand new equipment. Um, equipment wise, again, I, I, you know, again, two years ago, I did a facility for a, a high end facility for about $350,000. Nope. That same facility would easily cost. Sorry, somebody. you, you, oh. you went dead there yeah. for a minute. Sorry. So go uh, back to what you were saying a couple of minutes ago. I'll have it. My guy will edit it, but you went dead there for a little bit. Okay. So uh, about two years ago, I did a high-end facility, um, and they spent about $350,000 um, on equipment uh, for mm -hmm. a 200 seats high-end restaurant and bar. Um, today, that same equipment would probably cost them easily double, um, about $600,000. would probably be wow. the range. Um, for that exact same equipment today. Um, on the use aspect of that, though, we can, you know, a, a small 100-seat restaurant, I can probably do somewhere for about $50,000. You know what I mean? So it just didn't, depends on what style of restaurant, how much hood. You know, there are definitely aspects you have to consider. But, you know, an average purchase for an entire store is somewhere between 20 and 20 on the low end for like a uh, – uh, a quick service style place to 50 mm. to uh you know for you know 50 to 75 seat sit down restaurant what, what do you think has been your um <laughs> secret to your success in, in in your industry largely we've been successful over the last 13 years because we've been taking care of our clients um mm. we make sure that the equipment time. we make sure the equipment that we're doing um is serviced properly checked out and you know, we stand behind our equipment. So when we sell a client something um, and something does happen to go wrong, unfortunately, you know, in, in the used industry, it's very hard to predict X, Y, and Z happening. We try to mitigate that as much as possible here. Um, but when it does, we make sure we stand behind it and get out there to fix it or replace it um, in the end. So we want to ensure that our clients are happy with the product that they're receiving. Um, it's definitely not a price point. We don't sell as the uh, cheapest in town, but we, we sell based on the fact that we are uh, providing a quality, quality product uh, and service. No, I have, I have seen, you know, I've seen some of your videos where you're taking some of this old drab equipment that looks as if you're going to throw it into the trash can and, you know, it's just like, you know, it, you renovate it to something that looks like it's just come off the assembly line. I mean, that must make you feel really good. Uh, it's definitely uh, it's definitely a fun thing to do uh, when you see something come out of a place that uh, may not have been in, um, you know well kept. Um, fortunately, especially on the gas equipment side, most stuff is very very simple, and it's easy mm -hmm. to take something, break it down, clean it, service it, put it all back together, put in new parts, and ensure that it's a good working piece of equipment. Refrigeration gets a little bit more tricky, um, but yeah. it's still along the same lines. Um, it can be refurbished, and we can definitely make it look great. What, what, what's your plans? What's your plans for Advantage Restaurant Equipment for the future? What are you hoping to 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 gain? Well, we're definitely moving stronger into the the uh, new equipment segment. Um, with even with lead times the way they are, uh, mm. we we do a lot of hotels, and some of those hotels are ready for renovation. Uh, they're ready to kind of be fully reopened. So we're definitely spending a lot of time in that aspect. Um, we're, yeah. and, and we're growing here. I mean, our facility now, um, we are pretty much on a city block here. And uh, I think we're getting ready to expand and to add another warehouse on the property. Um, so wow. hopefully we can do that in the next year, depending on permitting and stuff like that. Um, but we're, we're definitely highly focused on, on expanding into the, the new segment and providing, you know, even more uh, quality equipment uh, to our customers. Now, you I'm obviously, you know, from looking at your website, your online stuff, you, you, you buy equipment, you buy equipment from people. So 
what what normally happens there? They just phone you up or they message you and say, hey, I've got this, I need to get rid of it, I can't afford to run anymore. Well, how does that happen? What do you do? Uh, so generally, so lately the way that a lot of that's been working is it's capitalization. So we're, we're focused mm. on purchasing from, from you know, major corporations who um, sell us quality equipment that's been maintained most of their life um, under mm-hmm. service contracts. And then on top of that, we do buy whole stores. Individual pieces have become a little bit harder to purchase just because mm-hmm. of logistics. Um, unfortunately, with the current environment, sending a truck out all day long just to pick up you know, one piece from different places um, has not been uh, a viable situation. Um, gas prices have made that really difficult. A, a diesel truck uh, gets six yeah. miles per gallon at $6 a gallon. Um, it adds up to <laughs> a lot so, of money. Um, but we definitely purchase if someone's going to like single pieces and they're going to bring it into our buy our warehouse. We'll take a look at it and see yeah. what we can do. Um, but as for most of our purchasing, they're full restaurants, full storage units, capitalizations from hotels, major corporations, uh, things like that right now. Just It's kind of a little bit, well, I mean, I don't know, kind of a little bit like a kind of the porn store industry of the, the porn store of the restaurant industry, although they don't, they don't leave it on assignment. Unfortunately, we receive things in a little bit worse condition than they do. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, yeah, I obviously got the magic touch to turn it around, Brad. That's, that's for sure. Yeah. So one thing I want to ask you is obviously since the pandemic and now even since the, the, the Ukraine conflict, you know, uh, shipping, getting products in is very difficult. You're based in Florida and predominantly, I guess, that a lot of your customers are based in Florida too as well. But do you actually ship or get equipment to people outside of Florida and what, you know, what struggles are you facing there? So we, we do ship all over the United States. We even ship to export facilities. So we have stuff going all over the world in some cases. Um, so we'll ship to an exporter and they'll load it onto a, a container and send it out. Um, so we definitely do a lot of that. You know, a lot of our sales online are through, you know, your major websites, your Ebays, even our web store. Um, and, you know, we get customers all, particularly every day all over the United States, but um, the biggest issue is obviously going to be the cost of freight. Um, those massive have, just now. I mean, it's just it's, it's been, exponentially just gone crazy. An item that used to cost roughly a couple hundred dollars to ship to, say, the southeast, is now double in a lot of cases when it comes down to it. Um, I think I just got a price quote yesterday for something to go to Louisiana, and it, what used to be about one hundred eighty nine dollars was four hundred and twenty nine dollars. Do you think there's a safety issue as well here that, that that comes up, Brad? Because the way I the way I see it is, if you know, inflation's going, it's, it's crazy. Things. I mean, you, you go into Publix for God's sake, you're paying nearly thirty percent more on eggs. So obviously, the restaurant industry has got increased costs, and whereby maybe one of their machines are maybe broken down or not working as good they have to replace it they can't afford the shipping they can't get it in do you think there's actually a health and safety issue there uh, for sure but fortunately um i'll say this most everything can be fixed <laughs> um but uh, i was recently in a small um i'm gonna call it i wouldn't call it a convenience store a drug store and their entire case for their drinks their milk their ice all those cases were out <sighs> Um, and because uh, going back to the employment side of things, because things have been a little bit, uh, more difficult for those service companies, they didn't have anybody to fix it for a couple of weeks. They couldn't find a service company out there to, to get mm-hmm. out on it. So everything in there was bad. Like they just, they had to throw away all their milk and all their product. And fortunately oh, somebody no. noticed it before a customer walked away with yeah. that. But, but in most cases, everything is fixable and serviceable. So... Uh, I would say a little bit less. So, I mean, you, you were saying that everything is serviceable. Yeah. So, that, you know, they, they found it before it actually, before anything got too bad. So it, it, there's still an issue there, obviously, you know, where they're essentially, it's affecting their business in a big way. Correct. And, and, it, and it can, but like I said, everything is serviceable. So it's just a matter of how fast those service companies can get to those clients to ensure um, they're being taken care of, yeah. but, um, it's definitely, we're in an environment where you have to be patient. Um, 
even with us when it comes to repairing stuff you know parts used to be one one or two days are taking you know sometimes two months uh to get a part so we try to find alternate sources for parts when that does happen but um right now you can't you just can't control it um i was fortunate recently to to find a part that the manufacturer didn't have any the distributors didn't have any but there just so happened to be one sitting in an Amazon warehouse um, <laughs> that's, that's very uh, that I was able to obtain. So I uh, got lucky, you know, um, but it, it's Amazon's not a place we normally source parts from. But uh, in this case, uh, it came up as a possibility and uh, we had to, to, to grab that part because otherwise that customer could have been waiting a year um, in some cases mm. uh, for that part because they had no plans to. To, so to make what, any what more advice would you at, give at what, you know, from that someone who wants to start their own restaurant business or food truck or something, you know, they, they come to you. Do, you. do you help them? Do you actually give them some advice on what to look for, what to start, the equipment that they need? Can they contact you for that? Yeah, absolutely. Anybody can call me anytime and ask any questions about what we, what they are looking for, how they can, um, uh, what they should be doing. Um, I'm going to advise everybody the same th- right now. If you can find a second generation restaurant, you're going to save thousands because you don't have that. It has a hood by second generation, You have a hood. You're going to save thousands and you're going to save a huge amount of, of, of time because right now the hood installers are way behind. So if you can find a second generation restaurant that has at least a hood and maybe everything else is gone, but the hood is there, then you're going to save yourself a ton of money and a ton of time. Um, and that's probably my key piece of advice to anybody who yeah. wants to get into the industry, even if it's not in the location you want, um, you know, it, it's going to be something that will, will surely be over, your location is overcomable. Um, the timelines are open. Can, if you're not, you know, can really crush a, a business from opening. That's, that's so, good advice um, actually. So definitely you know, trying to find a Brad, before we, 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 we finish off, I want you to tell everybody, you know, where they can find you, your details, uh, and, and how they can reach out to you. And you heard that there, ladies and gentlemen, if you, if you're a, a restaurateur or you're an entrepreneur in the food service industry and you need advice or you need to look at the equipment that they have, then you want to contact these guys because they know what they're doing. They've been in this industry for a long time and they can help you to not make mistakes that other people have. Brad, I want to uh, thank you for coming on Get Visible uh, today. What final words have you got for our listeners out there? You know, again, um, thanks for having me, John. And, uh, you know, one of those things is is just be diligent and do your homework uh, when it comes down to it. Uh, If you're not careful, it can definitely cost you. Um, And take as much advice from people who've done it uh, as possible. Um, And like you said, you know, it's it's one of those things today where um, advice is probably... And how can they reach out to you, Brad? How can they get a hold of you? You know, environment. Yeah, so customers can always call us on our main line at 407-321-9999. That's our main warehouse number. You can, you'll reach myself or Sheena. Um, you can find us on online at uh, advantagerestaurantequipment.com um, or cflequip.com. Both those will take you back to the same link. Um, we are on Facebook as Advantage Restaurant Equipment, um, and I... I apologize, but I don't know. We're, we're also on other social We'll put well, all the links YouTube, underneath. Instagram. We're we'll all there. The links probably underneath, underneath in the, the show like notes it. and things like that for everybody else. Brad, thank you for joining Beautiful. me this evening. Uh, and Well, actually, this morning. <laughs> it feels like this evening because it's very overcast and dark outside. Um, so, you know, <laughs> I wish you guys all the very, very best and success yeah. with your continued growth uh, and service, you know, the people in the restaurant industry. And we'll definitely have you back again uh, to talk about some business tips within the restaurant industry that will help other restaurateurs. So thank you, Brad, for joining me today. God bless.